And please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Mr. Paolo Martini. Thank you. He is the Chief Scientific Officer of Rare Diseases mm -hmm. at Moderna. Thank you so much for making some time to join us here. Thank you guys for having me, actually. I'm excited because it's the first time that I can wear good clothes. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I'd be spending the last uh, year in pajamas with a nice t-shirt on WebEx. <laughs> that almost sounds better, though, you know what I mean? It does. <laughs> Somehow it does. But it, it's also good sometimes to dress up and show uh, that uh, we are alive. <laughs> yeah. You looked in the mirror this morning, you're like, I still got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, once again, thank you so much for joining us Absolutely. today. Yeah, thank um, you. I just first wanted to ask you, what? how did you end up working for Moderna? It's actually interesting. Uh, I, I was working at Shire, which is a company that uh, always uh, work on genetic disorder, and uh, Moderna was uh, looking for someone uh, that uh, could start uh, the, the business of rare diseases because it makes sense uh, for uh, the technology that we have. And I got called by the same recruiter that recruited me to Shire, and he told me that absolutely I had to go to Moderna. Then I looked at uh, the specs of Moderna, and uh, they were not uh, uh, very popular at the time because uh, um, they were very secretive. Obviously, they were building uh, the platform uh, and they didn't want to release data until uh, they were absolutely sure that we had uh, a potential drug. So I was uh, considering, I said, should I go, should I not? And then I look at the panel uh, of the executive and uh, the CEO is French, I'm Italian. I said, ah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> so I ended up actually uh, interviewing with them uh, and uh, uh, I had a blast meeting the CEO. We got along right away. And uh, more importantly, with uh, my boss, which is the president, Stephen, that has been uh, uh, always on the CNN, with Evan So Cooper, with MSNBC, et cetera. Uh, we just sat down uh, and uh, we were like two childs uh, talking about science. Uh, so I said, this is it. And uh, so I accepted the job and it's been great so far. So. That's really great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what has brought you to Provincetown? You've been spending a lot of time here as of late. Yeah, yeah, Provincetown. As uh, uh, Bob mentioned before, I, the first time was in 1997, uh, and uh, with my boyfriend at the time, Irish boyfriend, we arrived here. We thought it was uh, an incredible community, but then obviously I went back uh, uh, to Europe and then moved to the United States. Uh, and then uh, last summer, somehow, uh, uh, you know, I was going through a breakup, uh, and uh, my best friend Bob that lives in town as well. So it's like you have to, you have to come down here. You have to stay here for a while. Uh, and I came down and I fell in love with the place. And, and more importantly, I fell in love with the community and the people. There are incredible people living here, incredible heart. And, uh, and more importantly, uh, I had a blast just uh, talking to people. They were obviously interested in uh, what I do and Moderna, et cetera. So it was always uh, a conversation, but more importantly, support, right? And so that's why it was uh, an easy transition for me to say, I'll, I'll, I'll live in Provincetown. Mm -hmm. And now I've been happy in this place uh, since then, uh, to the point that it's, sometimes it's difficult to go back to Boston. <laughs> I hear you. <ya. laughs> I lived in Boston before, and then yeah. I came here, and I was like, I'll just stay. <laughs> yeah, it's right. It, it does that, that feeling. Right? Uh -huh. that you feel so good and so uh, welcome and uh, protected as well. So and now you're a, home. And I, I am home. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, I will be home for a long time. Great. Uh, yeah. um, so what does Moderna do, and how does your specific role fit into yeah. that? So uh, I'm glad you asked because uh, obviously uh, for, uh, you know that we have done uh, the uh, vaccine uh, and Moderna is not only about the vaccine, right? Uh, we all uh, pitch in, obviously last year was a very pivotal year for us uh, to be able to um, put out a vaccine in that uh, record time, right? Uh, um, it, it was about 42 days in, uh, in order to, from proof of concept uh, to actually sending the first file to, for the trial. So for us, it was a, a phenomenal, but uh, uh, we have a platform and we have a technology that allow us really to touch base on different therapeutic areas. So we can do cardiovascular diseases, we can do oncology, we can do infectious diseases, including the COVID-19. And we have actually a big program now in, uh, with, uh, in collaboration with the uh, um, Gates Foundation for HIV a vaccine, which I'm very proud of because I think uh, we can serve uh, easily now the world uh, if we come up with the right vaccine. Uh, and so it will be a phenomenal time if we get to the point. Uh, and, uh, and then obviously rare genetic disorder where uh, we use this technology to replace uh, a gene, a malfunctioning gene. We replace it uh, and we see incredible uh, uh, effect uh, in animal models of diseases. Uh, and so now the next step is uh, to test it into human. And uh, 
hopefully uh, we'll have our first trials uh, in uh, human in uh, regenerative disorder uh, starting soon and we'll have uh, an idea if not only we can do vaccination but maybe we can do also all these other diseases which would be incredible because uh, it's it is a transformative uh, uh, therapeutic and and i love uh, uh, what i love of moderna i've been there now for five years uh, actually five and a half years uh, is that is patient centric. So we don't think uh, uh, of anything but the patients and what the patient needs uh, and the care of the patients. And it's been, it's printed everywhere in the company, but it's not just a print. Uh, it, it is a really belief that, and so I love that for the company. That's really great. Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. Um, a lot of people with the rollout of this vaccine, a lot of people took pause because they're typically so used to vaccines taking a really long yeah. time. How was Moderna able to produce this vaccine so quickly? Yeah, you know, we have uh, an incredible uh, uh, group of scientists. I have to say, I never see such a thing, but more importantly, the vision uh, uh, there to create something that would allow the production of a medicine in a fast manner, right? Obviously the technology allows it, but uh, uh, there's been a big effort to try to uh, build a manufacturing facility that could support so many clinical trials, uh, and more importantly, patients uh, uh, and uh, and the ability really to make uh, many different messenger RNA for many different uh, uh, um, uh, diseases. Uh, and so that vision was uh, critical and uh, important for us, mainly because we were able to show, in fact, that uh, from concept to proof of concept and then uh, to the first vial, there was a little time, which is a little scary, if you will, uh, because now the expectation probably is that uh, we have to do everything like that, right? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, not everything goes that easily and well, uh, particularly in science. Uh, you know, there's a lot of prediction, a lot of ideas, and then uh, a lot of disappointments. And so that's why I find the scientists, uh, although introverted as we are, uh, an interesting uh, group of uh, uh, relentless uh, people that they really want to find the truth, so, right. which is good. It's a, how are these variants to COVID going to yeah. affect the vaccines? So right now we are testing the different variants. Uh, we believe that probably we'll cover many of them, but we are particularly sensitive uh, about uh, uh, all the variants and particularly the South African uh, that seems to be the, uh, uh, the most aggressive. And uh, so we are uh, working uh, relentlessly to understand if our vaccine at the state is, is, is going to cover these variants. So there's a lot of uh, work uh, in clinical trial right now. And more importantly, as has been announced lately in the press release, uh, you know, we are uh, uh, obviously uh, covering adolescents and then pediatric. Uh, those are the two categories that were not uh, 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 involved in the very original trial, mainly for safety. The other things that I love of Moderna is that it's all about safety and uh, safety for the patients uh, and uh, uh, relying on the data. We just rely on the results and the data. We don't fabricate anything. The data speaks for itself. So, um, There was another... Um, today, there was news about how to... Uh, uh, kind of maximize the use of a vial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, you know, it, it is important and it's paramount that uh, uh, everyone that gets vaccinated, right? And uh, having the ability to uh, have a vaccine that has even higher stability after the first puncture of the vial, it gives you the opportunity really to use, uh, to maximize the use of the vial. And now the FDA gave us also the opportunity to uh, start to build bigger vials so that we can actually vaccinate even more people uh, at the same time. Oh, that's great. So it's, the idea is like, yeah it's maximizing that, like the Absolutely. vaccine juice. Yes. <laughs> the, the vaccine juice, also because uh, you really want, uh, you really want people to benefit from it, right? And so uh, wasting it is not a good thing to do. And uh, that's why I love that many of the clinic have endorsed uh, uh, the last minute call uh, so that uh, if they have extra, they administer to people, which is a, a good way and a fast way to actually get to the vaccination of uh, hopefully the world one day. Right? Do you guys know yet how long from your uh, second vaccination shot, you know, when are we going to need a booster shot? It's really tough. And once again, it's all about uh, the results, right? The data. There's not enough data right now. And I think, uh, you know, many people make predictions and say, oh, it would be six months, a year. We don't know, right? Uh, until uh, if you consider that uh, we started uh, the first clinical, uh, clinical trial last year, uh, I think uh, they still uh, need some time to understand what is really the duration of effect of the vaccine. Uh, 
and uh, uh, really uh, collect all this data and, and see if we need to uh, get a booster or not. Uh, but, uh, you know, many vaccines, uh, you know, they, you, they are two years, five years, uh, they all get a booster. Uh, we do the flu vaccine every year, right? Mm -hmm. Also because of the change in the strain, et cetera, trying to maximize our response to it. But in reality, I don't see that as a problem. As long as we know that we have one or that we will have a new version that cover even more variants, uh, to me, that's the most important thing. Uh, how frequently you do, I don't think is relevant in my, in my mind. Uh, that's my opinion, right? But uh, I, I think uh, it's important to have something. Right. And it's not like there aren't plenty of people who have their minds set on paying attention and making sure they're, they're watching for it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, like uh, uh, you do a uh, booster for the uh, tetanus, uh, for uh, measles, rubella, everything, right? Uh, so I think, uh, unfortunately, COVID-19 is part of our reality, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a reality that we need to live uh, with. Uh, but uh, having the opportunity to be vaccinated, I think, uh, it, particularly uh, in this fast manner, I've never seen something like this, uh, I think, uh, uh, speaks about uh, the progress in science uh, and uh, uh, and the incredible work of many people, right? Not only Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, everyone that actually uh, put uh, all their heart uh, in uh, in getting this done uh, as soon as possible. So it's been amazing. It has been amazing. I think uh, um, for me, uh, being a scientist for many years and uh, being part of many different drugs, being uh, uh, invented and launched, uh, uh, seeing uh, what happened uh, with uh, uh, with the COVID-19 the vaccine, uh, uh, it's uh, phenomenal. And uh, no one else in the past was able to make a drug in such a short uh, frame of time. So, oh, so it's, it's good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, but we're not done with you just quite yet. <laughs> Don't leave. <laughs> um, we are going to um, offer our viewers, if you all head over to our YouTube channel or if you're already there, comment on this video with any questions you might have. And we're going to bring Paolo back in a little bit. And we're going to ask some of your questions to him. Um, we have audience questions for Paolo. Are you ready? I am. Ready. Are you nervous? <laughs> Are you scared? I was nervous. No, I'm sorry to <laughs> like it. <laughs> okay, so first, um, we have a question from Heather. She said, what are the recommendations for pregnant ladies like me? Huh. So uh, I don't think uh, there's uh, enough data out there uh, to support uh, 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 the pregnancy, but uh, anecdotal uh, uh, stories that I, uh, I heard, uh, basically, there were uh, in some of the trial women that were pregnant, uh, they didn't know, and they received the vaccine, and they are just fine. My uh, recommendation is that she would check with her doctor, just to be sure. But uh, uh, there is data that is going to be collected, uh, obviously, on pregnant women uh, because uh, 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 it's important uh, to know. But right now, I think the best, uh, I, I guess, the best recommendation would be to talk to your doctor. Or uh, there are actually uh, phone lines uh, that have been established. Uh, uh, I know for, uh, for Moderna for sure, which is one eight six six Moderna, where uh, you can actually ask all these questions. If you have uh, any other underlying condition, uh, what is uh, the implication of getting vaccinated, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a, um, a staff of physician uh, being able to respond. So my suggestion would be either to contact uh, the company or the physician and see what is the recommendation. Oh, that's great. That's great that they have that phone line to answer questions. Absolutely. Like yeah, it's, uh, it's important because uh, sometimes I receive myself uh, these uh, emails. Uh, I have these, uh, particularly for a regenerative disorder, they contact me. And then I transfer, obviously, to the physician uh, and because uh, it's important to be able to know if you can receive the vaccine, particularly if you have uh, some uh, uh, different condition that could uh, uh, potentially uh, be harmful. So. Awesome. Okay, question number two from Sean Safford. Why is it taking longer for Moderna's vaccines to reach Europe? Is there a big difference between how you are manufacturing the vaccine in Europe compared to the U.S.? Um, I, I don't know if it's taking longer. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, each uh, of the government has been contacting us. Uh, so we have a distribution in uh, different countries. The UK, obviously, uh, you've seen uh, Singapore. I mean, that's not Sean's Europe. in Paris, yeah, I yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But uh, France, uh, Italy, et cetera. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, many uh, of the government are reaching out to us uh, to make, uh, uh, obviously, the distribution uh, faster. I don't think that is uh, slower. Uh, I think uh, it's probably uh, it's just, uh, uh, you know, we had data recently in Europe, and so now everyone obviously is embracing it. 
And I think also, uh, you know, uh, you see the vaccine, the performance of the vaccine, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, country like the US, they were the first, obviously, and now it's performing well. So other countries are thinking like, okay, we can, like, we can do this, right? right. And sometimes it, it is a way of safety for some countries. Mm -hmm. right? Um, another question from Sean, will Moderna get into manufacturing? Will you guys keep working on vaccines or stick to heart and cancer drugs? No, uh, we will continue manufacturing. Obviously, we have a big mandate from the government and more importantly also, uh, we always been working in infectious disease. Uh, the beauty of the messenger RNA that can be used uh, in many different therapeutic areas, as I said at the beginning, you can make it immunogenic or you can make it non-immunogenic uh, and treat a different uh, condition. As I said, we have cancer, we have uh, uh, genetic disorder, we have uh, hematology, uh, cardiovascular. So we are doing a lot of uh, different things because uh, the technology allows it. But uh, infectious disease uh, uh, is uh, a big group within Moderna. And so, as I mentioned, HIV, many other vaccines, CMV, uh, they are uh, on our pipeline. So there's uh, obviously an interest in pursuing something that we know now that works. Right? That's great. Yeah. So. Um, a question from Dan Kopp. Can we get Paola to personally vaccinate someone? Asking for a friend, <laughs> XOXO. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I wish I could do that. It's fairly easy, but uh, I'd rather have a nurse to do it rather than <laughs> right. You don't want me to do that. <laughs> totally. Trust me. Somebody does. <laughs> um, Bob Green, you might know him. Oh, no. <laughs> He's, he asks, is Paolo named after the drink or did he invent that too? Um, I think they're referring to your last name, which is Martini. Oh, uh, I wish that uh, I was the inventor. I wouldn't probably be here right. <laughs> and uh, struggling as a si young scientist uh, traveling the world, uh, trying to find a, a job uh, and a place to be. And uh, uh, so my life would have been very different. I'm sure. <laughs> so since I'm here, you'd I'm be having that, a martini that, somewhere right now. But I, I'll have a martini pretty soon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we'll have martinis right after the show. I have to stick to my name, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much for taking our questions, taking our viewers' questions. Thank you um, for having me. It was, it was truly an honor to have you here. Um, it's great that you have that phone line set up because not everyone's as lucky as me and Bob and our viewers to get to <laughs> chat with you personally. <laughs> thank you. You're doing really, really important, it. incredible work. Thank you. I, I think, uh, you know, they kudos to my colleagues, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's an incredible company. I, I say it because I believe it. Otherwise, I wouldn't say it. It's just an incredible company, and I'm so proud to be part of it. So. Thank you. Thank Thank you for I'm buying me. you a martini later after the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thanks, um, Thank you to everyone who watched our show today. Um, we hope you found it very um, informative and fun. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for watching. Thank you to our sponsors, the mm -hmm. Adam Howard Metalworking Studio at 3 Bradford Street and Be Well Cannabis Dispensary, where you can get all your cannabis needs met here in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks, everybody, for waking up in Promise Town. Wherever you are. We'll see you next Friday. Oh, we do have a really exciting show. Let's let's tease. Um, we are going to have Alex Morse, um, the new Provincetown town manager. On day five. He yeah. starts work on Monday. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll play trivia Monday. Cute. Um, probably not. He's probably going to be really busy. Probably. His first day of work. But not too busy to be right here on Wake Up in Provincetown next Friday morning. So we will see you there for our chat with Alex Morse. Thanks, guys. See you next week.